Hello everybody and thank you for stopping by to watch my video. Today is going to be part two, the final part of the Dragon Horde videos. And there's going to be some bonus content at the end of the video. But before we get started, if you could please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit the like button. It only takes a second and this will really help me out. So what we used today was some gold glitter, a couple different glues, some PVA, regular PVA glue or Elmer's glue some tacky glue, and then matte and gloss Mod Podge. Now the one thing I wanted to talk about was the gold glitter. This gold glitter that I used, I bought from Walmart, and it was 97 cents for that tube. And that tube pretty much, I was able to make everything that you see in the two videos with it. Um, it's important if you get your glitter somewhere else, not to get the extra large glitter or the very fine glitter. The very fine glitter almost looks like a powder, and then the extra large glitter is just too big. So you want to get something in between those two sizes. Alrighty then, let's get started. Okay, so we have the substructure for the mound. And what I want to do now is I want to take a couple of those chests that I made and I want to bury them in the, in the mound. I don't want them to look like they're sitting on top of the gold. I want them to look like they're buried in the gold. So in order to do that, I just took my X-Acto and cut out some small holes in the foam and just inserted the chests into those holes. In order to gouge out that foam, I used the same technique I used in the Clockwork Dragon video. I just cut a square and then cut horizontal lines and vertical lines and then just used a tool to gouge out the foam. Once that was done, I used hot glue to secure the chests into the mound. The throne you see there was made just from a standard chair. I used four glass beads for the feet of the chair and then, as I showed in the last video, just a small piece of paper towel I folded up and put in the seat of the chair, glued it in place, and then painted it red so it looked like a seat cushion. The Morning Star that you see there I put together from two separate pieces. The top of the Morning Star came from one of those skeletons, those oversized like two inch skeletons that you get in bulk. And then the bottom of the Morning Star, the handle, was just a scrap piece of dowel that I had. So I just glued the two together. One thing I wanted to mention is it's better to make the treasures bigger than smaller. It's okay if they're not to scale because you're not going to see them if they're too small and it's going to look better if they're bigger. Now we're going to do the same thing with some rhinestones. We're going to glue them just with some normal PVA glue to the base and this way when we pour the glitter over it, it'll look like they're buried and then we'll take other gems and we'll put those on top of the glitter. I used some hot glue to secure the chests and different items into the mound. Uh, as I said before, the hot glue won't melt this foam unless it's super hot. Some of the holes I cut for the treasures wound up being too big. So I just used a little spackle to close them up. This way it wouldn't look like there was a hole in the mound when I poured the glitter over the top. Next up, we're going to take some regular PVA glue and start spreading that over the mound. For some reason, my glue was extra watery. I, d I don't know why. I've used this glue before, but that definitely is not the consistency you want. It needs to be a little bit thicker. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a lot of spots where the glitter doesn't stick and it just runs down the mound. Okay, now we're going to take the glitter and we're going to pour it over the glue we just applied to the mound. I used the sheet of parchment paper underneath the mound just so that if any glue and glitter got onto that, it wouldn't stick. But a word of warning, glitter is going to get everywhere. Also, another pro tip I'm going to give you is if you buy the same tube of glitter that I did, that cap is a screw top, not a pop top. You can pop it off, but bad things are going to happen. Work your way around the mound in sections. And then when you're all done, let it dry thoroughly. Here it is all dry and covered with glitter. You notice that you can see some yellow showing through from the bottom. Unfortunately, I didn't have any gold craft paint. I would rather have base coated it in gold. But it's not really a big deal because what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and cover those spots with gems. From this side, you can see a tiny little necklace I made. It's hanging off the chest. I just took a piece of scrap chain that I had and glued on tiny rhinestones every third link or so of the chain. I 
Our final step is to lock down all this glitter with some Mod Podge. We want to take our gloss Mod Podge and apply a thin layer. Wait for that to dry and apply a second layer. When you apply the Mod Podge, dab it on. Don't brush it on. We don't want to knock glitter off. We want to keep it all in place and lock it down. Also, don't apply the Mod Podge too thickly because that will fill in all the gaps and when it dries you'll just have one flat surface and you're going to lose all the texture. If you do go too heavy in some areas, what you're going to have to do is wait for the Mod Podge to dry, apply PVA glue, some glitter over that, and then repeat the process. I applied Gloss Mod Podge over the glitter and the gems, and then I used Matte Mod Podge over the chest and other items, but that's up to you if you want everything to look shiny or just some of it. Okay, and there we have it. That large base looks fantastic with that dragon perched on top. You could even use this as like a diorama piece and just use it for display purposes. Also those one inch bases can be used to scatter just around the larger dragon horde or they can be used separately for another game. Use them as objective markers for Frostgrave. Alrighty then, thank you for watching and don't forget there's going to be some bonus content after the outro where I show how I made the one inch treasure bases. So what I wanted to show here were the small mounds that I made out of one inch bases. This was a craft that I think I saw from DM Scotty a while back, but I wasn't sure. So I figured I'd put it at the end of the video and if you know how to do it, you can just skip over. What I did was I took a one inch base and a little blue tack and stuck it to a popsicle stick. Then I took my hot glue gun and I covered the base in a small mound of hot glue, then waited for it to cool and did a smaller mound on top waited for that to cool, and did a smaller mound on top of that. Once the hot glue had cooled, I took my glue gun and used the hot nozzle to blend the three layers together so it just looked like one mound. Once that cools, it's just a matter of a black primer, some gold or yellow paint over that, and then some PVA glue and glitter and you're good to go. If you want to put a sword or something like that in the pile, best to do it when the glue is still warm and sink that into the glue, let it cool, then do your primer. For these one inch bases, I used tacky glue instead of PVA because the tacky stayed on the base better and didn't run off. Just add gems, shields, weapons, whatever you like and you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed this extra content and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.